Yeah, I thought you guys might be interesting uh, or find it interesting. I uh, wanted to just demonstrate my one of my latest instruments. It's an HP uh, 437B power meter. Uh, these meters can be used with uh, at least one of ten different power sensors. This particular power sensor here uh, covers minus 30 dB to plus 20 dBm. That's about 1 microwatt to 100 milliwatts. There's other sensors that will measure uh, smaller amounts of power, others that will measure higher. But uh, this one here is a uh, pretty good coverage. Uh, it covers uh, 100 kilohertz to 4.2 gigahertz. Other sensors will cover 10 to 18 gigahertz or higher, uh, all the way up to 50 and 110 gigahertz. I uh, usually, I most of the time use this meter for uh, verifying the accuracy of uh, attenuators, verifying uh, calibration uh, sources, and uh, validating the outputs of my signal generator and my function generator. Uh, with the assistance of attenuators, like, uh, well, let's see here, hold on a second. With the assistance of something like this here, I'm going to show you. This here is a 30 dB 75 watt attenuator. If I put this in line, I can increase the upper measurement range to 100 watts. The measurement accuracy is quite a bit better than my uh, than my other meters. I have a couple of Bird 43s, and they're accurate. They're accurate to about five percent or so. They're, they're they're pretty good. But this meter here will allow me to make measurements as accurate as less than half a percent. So that's pretty good. But uh, to uh, calibrate this meter, we first of all press zero so we can zero the uh, the element once that's done we then set calibration factor to 100% which is where it's at and now we calibrate the element and we select 100% and it's done. And so to verify that the, uh, that the calibration took place, we will shift and turn the, the reference on and it is at zero dBm, just the way it should be. Now if you want to measure something a little higher power than this, you can uh, add one of these attenuators, but then you can go in and set an offset We'll set it for 30 dB. Now what this will do is it will make a correction. So if I turn on the reference, it shows it's now 30 dB, and we can change that to watts, which will be one watt. Now it'll go up higher than this. I can uh, set the uh, offset to something higher. So when you have something with a 40 dB attenuation and you have a 1 milliwatt coming out of the end of the attenuator, it will be 10 watts. It's kind of a useful. The meter over here it kind of gives you a visual representation of where the meter is in the current range. This meter has five ranges and it automatically selects. It also gives you the opportunity to see noise, or to peak your your readings, which you really can't do from the digital display. So the analog meter is kind of handy for that. But other than that, I like I said, I pretty much use this for measuring uh, measuring references and calibration sources. So let me uh, be right back, and we'll do a couple of measurements. All right, well, the first measurement, we'll take a reading off my good old trusty HP 3325A function generator. So what we'll do is we'll set the meter ready to go. We'll set the amplitude to, let's say, minus 10 dBm. Set. 
And we're really, really close. 9.9897 dBm. That is really close. That's well within spec of this instrument. So let's uh, try going to minus 20. Yeah, it's right on the money there. That's pretty awesome. So, we got that instrument. We could go to 0 dBm. And it's just a little... That's 0 0.03, so that's still well within spec. Next thing we'll do, we'll try checking the calibrator output of this spectrum analyzer. It's supposed to be minus 10 dBm. That's what it's showing here on the display, on the scope. Or on the CRT, I should say. And so we'll check this one next. And here we are, 10.3 dBm. Minus 10.3 dBm. Not bad, not bad. I uh, could tweak it in probably a little bit using the adjuster, but I think we'll just leave it there for now. That's uh, pretty good. What about the sensor here? This is the, uh, the HP8482A power sensor. Now, on these sensors, they have what are called calibration tables. So, if I was using this sensor below 450 megahertz, my calibration factor is 100%. If, uh, if I go higher than that, then uh, I have to use a different calibration uh, a factor. So, if I'm measuring a frequency that's at 450 or higher, then I would set the meter for a calibration factor of 99.3. I mean, 50 and above, it'd be 98.7. At 1.9 gig, it's 98%. Uh, and 2.1 gig and higher, it's 97.9%. Now, what this does is that uh, the, uh, the SWR on these things are not flat, so the manufacturer calculates these, these calibration factors for you. And you can enter these directly onto the meter. However, this meter here, it also recognizes the sensor that you connect to it. And uh, to do that, see, we go press shift and sensor. And it's showing the very sensor we have connected. It has all of the calibration code uh, uh, correction factors in memory. And so when you uh, operate a certain frequency, you either enter the frequency direct or you can enter the calibration factor direct and the meter will automatically correct for the uh, impedance variances and uh, show you the corrected output. But uh, this is about all I've got for now. Um, hopefully I'll think of something else that might be more interesting. I was just kind of just threw this together real quick. I was just sitting here bored so hope you guys enjoyed it. Carry on.